Okay. Pastor Aya is coming up now. So put your hands together. Boy. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. Today, I will behave myself and use the Bible. Amen to Jesus. So I don't need any forgiveness today. Like I required yesterday. But I thank God for the privilege of coming to share God's word. It's an honor to be called to speak God's word. And I believe there's something God is doing in this place that I've not seen in so many places. And I've been around for it. I might look young, even though I'm young. Um, younger than all of you. To know how young I am, let's go to the gym together and you know that I'm quite young. Um, but honestly, I'm not saying because you're here. There's something going on here that is profound. The Spirit of God is in this place. What you have never even thought of and imagined. The issue with many of us is that we don't have imagination. You need to have imag say imagination. imagination. There's power in imagination. The reason why God created birds and fish was not because we used to admire them. It was to stimulate our imagination. I hear somebody. Father, we give you praise and glory. We bring this atmosphere under divine subjection. Have your way in our midst today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me time myself. I like to keep the time. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 9. And I was, this is my anchor scripture. It's a very strange scripture, but um, any time I read the scripture, I query God. And I wonder if... <laughs> Anyway, I will tell you as we travel through the text. John 9 verse 1 says, And Jesus passed by, and he saw a man which was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So a man had a situation. They were trying to, trying to find out the cause, the root cause of the problem. Was it him? But how, come, how, how could it be him when he wasn't born? Or his parents that was born blind. So there are things that your parents can do that can impact you. But once you are in Christ, it is overruled. That's your amen. It's too shallow. Amen. Say it is overruled. It now says, Jesus answered. And this is where I have a challenge what Jesus answered. Neither this man sinned nor his parents. But this, that the works of God should be made manifest problem with this text in him why inside him when he's blind i don't need you to walk in me when i'm blind walk outside of me two of us i can't hear you but also this man had been reduced to begging and if this was done by the works of god be made manifest why did christ wait so long this man hearing what christ said had a bag of mixed feelings why wait till my situation has reduced me to begging? If it was done, that your works be made manifest. At least do it when I'm five years old. Do it when I'm ten years old. Not when Bible called him a man. That means this man was of age. That means he has wasted, let's assume, 40 years of his life begging because God chose to allow it for his works to be manifest. Me have a problem with it. You might not, too, but me have a problem with it. But I believe this was done for our learning. Are you here, somebody? Yes. The second text is because of time was when Jesus was going to go and raise Lazarus from the dead. And the disciples asked him in John 11, from verse 7, You desire to go to Judea, but they desire to stone you there. And he said, and I must reach your hearing. Because when you read his response and you just oppose his response to the, aunt, to the question, it doesn't make sense. He said, are you following me? He says in verse 9, are there not 12 hours in a day? If a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not 
because he sees the light of this world. But if he walks in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. I'm sure you've all read this text many, for many, many times, for many years, true or false. Can you explain to me? Is it because we do with the Bible? <laughs> Jesus says something in John chapter 9. Listen to his wickedness. Oh. He said, When he had thus spoken, his spat on the ground, made clay of spittle, anointed, I don't know what kind of anointing that one is, oh, his eyes, the eyes of a blind man with clay, with, with spit and clay, anointed him. His begging was not enough. Oh. Now you're not, you're not humiliating with your spit. <laughs> are, you, are you following me? Yeah. And I said to the man, and I question this, go and wash. He didn't even say, take him. <laughs> He's blind. How did you expect him to get there blind? How? But I'm sure you've read this before, haven't you? Yes. But how come you haven't asked the questions? Me, I always interrogate the Bible. I'm an investigator. Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? I can read chapter 200 times. And that's minimum. Say minimum. <laughs> that's why many of us can't pass the test of life. Because it comes by study. Because the answers are in the scriptures. Not on your prayer altar. Uh-oh. Even though I did video all night in my prayer altar, amen to Jesus. Because prayer is only as good as your position with God. It's who you know you are with God. Let me say it again. Prayer is only as effective as how your mind sees yourself with God. If your daddy was Nigeria's president, your work would be different now. I have a friend, a, brother, a, young, a young brother. He just announced something recently. He is currently following the boy now. Has changed. His work has changed. Because he knows. He doesn't need to pray. He, when he needs to go and collect things from his dad, he doesn't need prayer. He doesn't need to fast. Because it's entitlement. That's why you are an heir of God. I need to break your skull today. For you to understand that you are an heir of God. The bondage in your mind has held you bound. It's not the devil, it's you. Your mind has limited your capacity. Because you don't know who you are in Christ. When you pray, you're begging. Beke. I didn't choose, you didn't, you didn't, do you know that for God to save you, you didn't, first of all, you didn't get saved. Let me push a bubble there. You didn't find Christ. How, where did you find him? Show me. Show me where you found Christ. Oh. Show me. He found you. And for the almighty God to find and save you, there's something he has in store for you. You think, you think, you think he's, not, he's not busy? He's busy. He's very busy. Amen to Jesus. For a busy God to say, I will save you. You must understand that you are special. And there's a mandate. That is why the entire earth is yearning and waiting for the sons of God to manifest. There's some things that can never be answered in this world until we manifest. Behold what is groaning in pains and tears. I try and behave myself today. Praise the Lord, somebody. Now let me now start by establishing two markers for this text. And the first marker in John chapter, sorry, Romans 14, 17, it says, as it is written, I have made thee, not I will make you, a father of many nations, according to him who called those things that be not as though they were. Ah, that's, that's a good church. Because everybody says, ah. It's not ah, it's where. And where is what? Is it pastor present tense? Thank you. Because who read things that are not in the Bible? I'll show you today. That means... This, the issue concerning Abraham's being the father of many nations was already settled when he was childless. That means what you've been in life today, God has settled it already. Yes. Oh, that yes is too shallow. Yes. 
what God has made you to become has been settled by God already. Yeah. There's no contention. Say, according to him, who collect those things? Say, call. Oh. Can you call a dead man? No. In real, in real life. <laughs> Not to raise him from the dead. When people die, you don't call them anymore on the phone. Can you? So I only call you, please watch this, when I can see you. Because if I call you right now on your phone, it means that I need to go and see a psychologist. Because I can see you. Why am I calling you? You only call what you don't see that exists. Oh my God. Let me rewind. You only call that which exists where you can't see. So it doesn't mean, mean really, even though you can't see, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So when I can't see you, I call you, true or false. But when I see you, I don't need to call you anymore. So if I call you for an appointment, I call you because I can't see you. So because you can't see your healing and your breakthrough, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Whatever you want from God today already, I can't hear you. Shout it out and I say, it exists. The second marker, scripture, is Ephesians 1 verse 3. You know I'm not looking at the Bible though. It says, blessed be God who has blessed us, past tense, so, with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. And this is a wicked scripture. I'll tell you why. In Christ Jesus, according as, you know, you have to first understand English. Before you understand the Bible. That's why I like the um, professor Jim, okay? You teach us issue and not issue. Because there's no issue anywhere. Praise the Lord, somebody. Um, Bible says, <laughs> it says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of this world to be holy and blameless in love. Which one comes first? Blessing you or choosing you? Who says chose you first? Who says bless you first? Who, who, who says bless you first? Bless. Who says bless, chose you first? It's English. It's not revelation. Please go back. Because a lot of things that we think is revelation, it's not revelation, it's English. Say English. It says, blessed be God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, just as he chose. He chose. So which one comes first? Yes. No. Yes. Ah, you put got F9 in English, oh. Yes. You put it past English. Ah, what are you doing giraffe in your in school? <laughs> this is, so you can see that the issue with knowing Bible is English. Say English. My wife, I am already. The praise of somebody. According as he chose us, so he chose you first. He now chose you according, he now bless you according as he has chosen you. Now he chose you where? In him. Before the foundation of this, so before you were born, he chose you. So you didn't get saved. He chose you. Not that you are saved, man. It is the evidence that he chose you. Are you following me? And now that you have seen the evidence of him choosing you, it has the evidence that he has blessed you. But the issue here, sir, where me and God have problems, I don't live in heavenly places in Christ Jesus physically. I live here on earth. So why bless me there? Why bless me there when I'm living here? The Bible says in Colossians 3 verse 1, if ye then be risen with Christ, consider those things which are above. I wonder, that's confusing. Confusing. They are risen with Christ. Where is the above again? <laughs> and I realize that we live in two dimensions. We live on earth, which is our location. Say location. location. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 6, He has raised us up, us together with Christ, and made us to sit. I'm not back I'm sitting. Oh my God, you didn't hear that one. Some of you are wrestling, binding, binding, wrestling, binding, binding, I'm fighting devil. Men of fight devil, though. It's too small for me to fight. I just ignore him and quote scripture. I don't say no weapon, no out of fear, no weapon for me to prosper. And that was out of fear. I, I am more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me that is in the world. Because you are praying negatively and your mind chooses negative things. But I speak positively so that I will think positively. Are you listening to me, somebody? So that means you have a position and you have a location. Say position and location. I can't hear you. Now, why did God bless you in your position? I will come to you very soon. Because you understand, sorry, that's my message is called, you know, your time has come. 
It doesn't matter. Because by the time I finish message, I've forgotten title. <laughs> Press the Lord, somebody. Say it's my time. Just to, just to comply. Say it's my time. So you have a position and you have a location. True or false? Say have a position. And have a location. In your position, you are completely blessed and you are a finished article. In your location, you are WIP, work in progress. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 says this. He says, He saved us, He called us, not according to our works, but according to His, 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 not your purpose. His own purpose and grace, which was this, which was given to us, not in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus before the world began. But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. If you, don't, if you know this scripture, your life will change completely. Because whatever you wanted in Christ was given to you. Where? In, in, in Christ, Jesus. When? Were you living before the world began? How did he give it to you? Uh -uh, but how? Because he chose you already. When he chose you, he gave it to you. And I was, one day I was looking, I said, Paul is confused. How can you use Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ in one's just trying to explain things? Until I realized, I said, let me ask you this question. Who came first? Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ? Who came first? I suppose you don't answer for them. Don't answer for them. Who came first? Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ? If you say you, you will tell me why you because if you are guessing, who says Christ Jesus? Okay, for, 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 for time. Who says Jesus Christ? No. The Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of this world. So he only came to act what he had done. Oh my god, you didn't get that. He only came to act out what he had gone done. So he existed as Jesus Christ. First, he not came as no, he, sorry. He existed as Christ Jesus first. He now came to manifest as what? Jesus Christ. That manifestation was the evidence that everything he has given to you in Christ Jesus must manifest. He says, is, but now, is now made manifest. Is now, this is English or not revelation. Is now, say now, now. made so what he gave you is now made what? Manifest. If you understand these two scriptures, your prayer life will change. Because you need to inform you how you pray properly. Now to understand this, I need to show you the concept of time. Say time. time. If I ask today, define time, you can't define time. Because it's too spiritual for me. Um, can I still define time? What was time? What, what creates time? This is physics now. Eh? No, physical time, 24 hours. What creates time? Eh? Events, no. Eh? Who said? Sun eh, and... No. This rotation of the... Of the... Of the sun around the earth. That creates what? Time. So time is synonymous to what? Lights. So time is synonymous to, but this is not revelation, no. Because when it's daytime, you say it's daytime. When it's nighttime, nighttime. True or false? You understand? So praise the Lord, somebody. So, so, so one person said to you that something learned in school, I quite used to in the Bible. That's why Jesus Christ spoke about history, about farming, about uh, geopolitics, about science, everything. So knowledge that you learned in school also helps you to understand the Bible. Are you following me? And the Bible says, and the earth was that form and void. The Genesis verse one, chapter 1 verse 2. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And when I saw the face, I queried, why face? All of you, all of you that right now being in chapter 2. I mean, I'm still asking why face? You are, saying, you are going to chapter 2 and chapter 3. I'm saying verse 2 of chapter 1. The face of the deep. And I realized the face of anything is what? The identity of that thing. So that means the identity of the earth at that point was darkness. And the response to darkness was not binding. Darkness, I bind you. This is how we play. Darkness, I bind you. I bind you. No, 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 no. No, no, forget that one. Just say, let there be light. 
and dark and light shines best where in darkness so bring on the darkness for your glory to be shown for me to express to appreciate your glory you must put it on the backdrop of darkness yeah. who don't like me in darkness but you will soon see very soon and God said let there be light and there was what light and Bible says and so what happened to light darkness wow that's why you don't know the Bible God divided the light from darkness. Darkness never disappeared. Now watch this. One key says God separated light from darkness, not darkness from light. Because you know some of you are already, you're already, you're already in chapter 10, in, fact, you're in Exodus already. Me, I'm still in verse 4, verse four of, of one chapter. He divided light from what? Darkness. Now, when you, please watch this, when you take a small figure, like two, over four, what do you get? Half. What, what is half? A fraction. So God made darkness inconsequential. My God, you didn't hear that? God made darkness inconsequential. He made darkness a fraction. Darkness had defined the world with chaos, with commotion. And when God said, let there be light, darkness had to go into obscurity and take its place in obscurity. Every darkness in your life, I declare, when you declare, let there be light, I shall move into obscurity in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you following me? And the Bible says, and God saw the light. And, and God saw the light. No. And God called light day. And God called darkness night. And it was evening and morning the first day. Now, is scripture up? Can someone tell me anything you notice in that scripture? What else? Capital letter. Because God called the light, capital letter, day. God called darkness, capital night, capital N, night. And it was evening and morning, small letter, day. What's going on, what's going on here? And now, once you mention the word day, say day. day. Define day for me. I'm not picking on you. <laughs> so day is morning, evening, and night. So when you hear this, you have, your man has already defined day as morning, evening, and night. Wrong. Because God had not created the sun and the moon. Uh -uh. Uh, look at me. God had not created the sun and the moon. So what was the light? John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the world. The world was with God. And the word was God. Continue. The same was in the beginning with God, right? And, and the light. And the light was the light of all men. So that light was not Makatu Kolosan. It was the S-O-N. It was the word of God that took charge of the earth at that point in time. And God brought the earth under divine subjection and worship of the word of God, Christ himself. Are you following me? And he said it was evening and morning. There's no night there. You know why? Because night was in obscurity. So why did God call it evening and morning? I'm going somewhere with this. It's because God started the day with darkness and ended with light. So God ends the day better than he started it. Oh my God. I declare your life shall be better than you started your life in the name of Jesus. That's your amen is too shallow. That's your amen is too shallow. But there was no moon and sun there. God that created the sun and the moon on the fourth day and he made them subject to that same evening and morning. Oh my God. So by creating, please watch this, the lights, he was inferring, creating and enforcing God's own timing because timing is synonymous to light. So when he created the sun and the moon, he made this natural time today, 24 hours, subject to his own time. Are you following me? Say in God's time, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. So God does not live in time. Time lives in God. And that is why when God came to the burning bush, are you following me? The bush burnt, but it wasn't consumed. Why? My personal interpretation. 
It takes time for something to burn. And when God stepped into time, time had to cease. <laughs> so the, there's no time. You know, for you to take a step, you need time. If time ceases right now, you, 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 you're on pause. So because there's no time, the bush cannot burn. Are you following me now? And for God, we should be very carefully. When you say God is Alpha and Omega, let me help you here. You already think beginning and end. It's for your mind to appreciate it. There's no beginning and end in God. It's one place. <laughs> 1900. Year 2000. Year 2020, 20, 32. That hasn't existed. It's one place in God. You didn't get that. I'm messing up with your mind right now. Is one place because God cannot live in time. Time lives in God. Are you here, somebody? This is important because the prep I'm going to pray later on that will help you. Are you being blessed today? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. My prayer today is the decree of God's day shall reign in your life in the name of Jesus. So that means that I can influence that day by speaking the word of God over my life daily. Where everything in my 24 hours is controlled by the timing of God. Now let me say this to you. Everything that you want from God today is an input inside time. Oh my God. If you can get this one, your life will change. So the reason why God blessed you in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, because time doesn't exist there. So before you were married, you were married in your position. It manifested in time. So you were a graduate in your position in Christ Jesus before it manifested in time. Now, there's no way, unless you're a genius, to be a graduate in eight years and be, and be a graduate in eight years. It can happen to some geniuses, but you still need eight years. It can happen in one year. So if it takes, for normal people like us, 24 years to get a degree, it shows you that everything that God does for you comes through the expression of time. God already knew the day you graduate. So that graduation was already programmed in that time. So the issue is, how do I locate what God has put in time for me? Can you hear me? God said concerning Jacob and Esau, he said, the children not yet been born, but the purpose of God according to election will stand, not of what, but him that collects. God had destined Jacob to have the advantage before he was born. And God had destined a time and a day where that blessing will come upon him. True or false? Can you hear me? I don't hear of them praying and fasting no, in this period. All I he heard or I saw in the scriptures was Rebecca happened to be at the right place at the right time. And overheard a conversation and she realized that that is the opportunity. That God, because, you know, sometimes I, I pray God though. God says that the older will serve the younger. He didn't tell her how. He didn't tell her what day to happen. Because if he told you day will happen, you, you go and be there. Just, just a normal day. This man in John chapter 9 was experiencing a normal day. He, he didn't wake up that morning expecting Jesus. Oh my God. That day that seems normal to you, prepare for a divine encounter in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's your amen is so shallow. One man who said to you that the thing that God has placed in time for you and I, and we've taken and made decisions, and we have bypassed them. Because when Rebecca spoke to Jacob, Jacob queried her plans and said, preempting, because not everything that requires prayer and fasting requires thinking and planning. Go and do a business plan. He said, if my father feels my hand, I'm, I, 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 I have smooth hands. Because they had to preempt what a man would do to try and prevent the heal, the blessing. And that is why they took certain actions to mitigate against the risk. My prayer today is that those in whom God has placed your destiny in their hands may you be at the right place at the right time to meet them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Acts 18, Priscilla and Aquila, there was a decree. They had to leave Rome and come to Corinth because of an ungodly decree. They were probably complaining to God, God, you are wicked. Not knowing that God had a plan. To meet Saul, Paul. And Bible says that they were both tent makers and the rods. So God created a partnership for them through a through an ungodly decree. Are you following me? Are you following me? 
I pray today that God will align you with your partners in the name of Jesus. Amen. That your amen is so shallow. Amen. That your amen is so shallow. Amen. I recall the story of Samuel and Saul. God allowed Saul's father to lose his sheep. It was in the process of looking for the sheep that he did not find. They met Samuel. Because the servants told Saul about the prophets. The times God will speak to you through people who are lower than you. Oh my God. Oh. I'm not sure you hear that one. The people you disdain. <laughs> they will wonder God used to speak to you. And sometimes when you disdain them, you hear God's voice. You hear somebody. God used a servant. And the Bible says Samuel took, first of all, the Bible says God told Samuel in his ears. That's the only scripture in the Bible I've seen where God spoke to one in his ears directly. I said today, God will trouble the ears of your destiny helpers. Amen. That's your amen to shallow. Amen. You hear somebody. And when they arrived, he says that Samuel took Saul and made him sit in the cheapest of places. There's a man I met. The two men who have been influential in my life. You know, when Jesus Christ spoke to the man, I'll get there. In John chapter 9, he said, go your way. And the man went his way. So my way will be for your way. You can't, do, you can't put me my will. You have to know which way will I get to my destiny. Because Salom means sense. God, God deals with me through aeroplanes. Say aeroplane. aeroplane. I booked a flight to go to come to Lagos. And for some reason, I had to change my flight. And there's a man I've been praying to meet. And a man happened to be on that flight. Please, two things. Please listen to me very carefully. I'm very stubborn. That's why I can pray. You know, when you see someone go and pray, they're very stubborn. So women, you have to be careful. Though. You don't see they can pray. It's so very stubborn. Pray amen to Jesus. Amen. But make sure you fast so that you can kill his flesh too. Amen to Jesus. Fast is not for, not for God. It's for you. <laughs> Praise the Lord somebody. <laughs> Praise the Lord somebody. So it took a decision for me to change my flight. It took a checking attendance to put me on the same road with the man. Are you watching the simple things? Now, it now took me to now speak to him on the plane. And the rest is history. As a Muslim. It was Ishmael that carried Joseph to Egypt. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Call your infant Ishmael. Call your Ishmael. That will help you. Amen to Jesus. You don't like that one. You can't decide who God will use. Are you hear somebody? Can you hear me, somebody? If God will bust, God will bust uh, Peter, uh, Simon Peter's bubble. Go and meet a Gentile, Cornelius. Are you hear somebody? God will trouble a Christian for an unbeliever. Are you hear somebody? And an heir with Saul. Are you following me? Say it's my time. I can't hear you. Let me check the time too. Say it's my, it is my time. I can't hear you say it's my time. Say it's my time. Like I was saying, in your position, you are a finished product. So when I pray, I begin to superimpose who I am in my position to manifest in my location. If God shows you your position, you will say, God, help me to meet this person. It is you, but you don't know it's you. Because in your position, you are a complete product. You already are fulfilling your purpose and destiny. But in your location, you are a work in progress. Yeah. So sometimes, who you are in your position does not match who you are in your location. Are you hear somebody? Yeah. And you now need to superimpose that person into your location. And it requires prayer properly. And also taking right decisions. Are you hear somebody? Yeah. Say right decisions. I can't hear you. So let me now begin to come into my text today and answer some of the questions in my text today. He said, this was done that the works of God be made manifest in him. And I query God. That's the first thing. Secondly, the Bible says that this present suffering cannot be compared to the glory that be revealed where? In me. Huh? God, why, why is everything in me? The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling because it's God who's at work where? In you. So when I pray, what am I praying? I'm working it out, my God. What God is working in me, I work out. I work out my divine healing. I work out my divine favor. I work out my grace. I work out my anointings. 
Walk it out. Say, walk it out. I can't hear you. Exercise yourself unto godliness. Walk it out. God is working in you. That is why we fast and pray, not to bind devils, but to work out what God is working in you. You know, if I take you to a regiment of Jimmy for 12 months, you will, you will change. But that image, someone's laughing at me. That image was there already. You just couldn't see it. You have to work it out. Say, it's time to work it out. Jesus now anointed the man's eyes. And he said to him, go. No, he now said something. I am the light of the world. Say, light of the world. Recall, he made reference to the light of the world again in John chapter 11. Making reference to him being stoned. He says that 12 hours, say 12 hours, in where a man can walk and he will not stumble. Why? Because he does what? He sees the light of the world. Oh my God, please watch this. What he's saying to you there is that even though the sun is shining in that 12 hours in the day, your reliance cannot be on the sun. Your reliance must be on the light of the world, the S-O-N, not the S-U-N. You must rely always on the S-O-N. He now went further that if, if a man walks in the night, he will stumble because there is no light in him. <laughs> I will explain that to you very soon. <laughs> but this is, this is gospel, though. You've got to understand God, how can you understand Ephesus? When you went for rice now, you have to go and bring many dictionaries. Amen to Jesus. Amen, amen somebody. Can you hear me, somebody? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. And I asked God, why did you ask this man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam? Until you see that Siloam means sense or purpose or your destiny. So God did not want him to walk there by sight, but by faith. Because once he declared himself the light of the world, what did he do? He opened the man's inner eyes. Oh my God. Because your physical eyes are what actually hinders us from getting to our purpose. When you see the exchange rate, <laughs> praise the Lord, somebody here. <laughs> when you see the inflation, when you see political instability, when you hear all the rumors of elections, it means to inform how you apply your faith. You need to be blind to those things and open your eyes to see the light of the world. And the only way the light of the world can be relevant to you is when it's inside of you. The entrance of the world gives light. My word shall be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? So this man's physical eyes was blind, but yet he could get to his purpose because his inner eyes were opens my prayer as the Bible says that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding is opened open the eyes of your understanding are you following me today let's not go to Ecclesiastes verse 9 as I begin to draw a close to this meeting he says I returned and saw under the sun, 12 hours period, that the race was no longer to the swift, but the battle to the strong. Not strong me to did 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 did. When that says time and chance happens to them all. Have you ever wondered what was trying to say there? Because if you apply it and cross-reference this with John chapter 9, 9 or 11, that 12 hours is represent day under the sun. So for him to reference this, he saw an, an abnormality where the swift, who were physically swift, were not winning, winning the race anymore. Those who were strong were not winning the battle anymore. What was going on? He said time and chance, and time is not 12 hours, it's 24 hours, which includes darkness. <laughs> If you now cross-reference this, my God, with John chapter 11, say so when it is night time, he will stumble because there is no light in him. So the reason why there's no light in him is because, because this is why there's darkness is because there's no light in him. Because my day is not referenced by sun and moon. 
So when there's light in you, when there's a casting down for you, there'll be a lifting up. Because my day is not controlled by the sun and the moon. It's controlled by the light of the world. Say light of the world. Say light of the world. So you live in darkness as if it is light. And even though you're not swift, you can still run when it's dark. When those who have light in them have to stop. Let me rewind. You can catch this. Because if you're going on a journey to it, but right now, and your headlights go off at night, and there's no traffic light, there's no street lights, what will you do? You will stop. But if I'm carrying my own light, I don't need street lights, my God. I'm not as fast as you. You're driving a Ferrari. I'm driving even a Kakena Pepe. You, you have to stop for seven hours. You know, one of my friends was speeding one day, carrying his dad one day. Speeding, when I was 160. His dad said to him, stop. Get off the road. He said, this car you overtook. We were going at 160. He passed us in five minutes. So that's your speed. Just five minutes advantage. My point is, when you have an advantage to walk at night, where everybody's struggling, my God, you, be, you begin to win the race because of your advantage of carrying the light of the world. Say, I'm a carrier of the light of the world. I can't hear you. I may say, I'm a carrier of the light of the world. Bible says, Arise and shine, for my light has come, and my glory has risen upon you. Don't get excited yet. Darkness will cover the earth. Let me tell you something. I'm not now. I mean, serious. Darkness is coming. As, as, as landed in Nigeria already. And there's gro- and my challenge is, it now says gross darkness upon the people. So the darkness upon the people is worse than the one upon the earth. That is satanic wickedness. God forgive me. But there's more darkness in church today than ever. Because there's no word anymore in church. It says. But the Lord himself, or the word himself, shall arise upon you. And his glory shall... No, it's going to sin. Because everywhere is dark. We are kind light. You stand out. It's time to stand out. I can't hear you. But you have to open the eyes of your inner man. Say, I open the eyes of my inner man. Say, I declare my inner, my inner eyes are opened. We're going to pray next five minutes or two minutes. Ephesians 5, my last scripture, I think. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Let me show you the importance of time. Who divides time today? Can someone tell me? B.C. and A.D. Jesus Christ. This same time, that is the most important thing that God has given us on earth today, it was divided by Christ Jesus. And because we are in Christ, the reason why I didn't say this, the reason why God gave Jacob the advantage over Esau, I wonder God, you must be wicked. These people were not one born. You've chosen somebody already. Because Jacob was a progenitor of Christ. So he had the advantage. I declare today, it's not enough to say I have an advantage. You need to work out your advantage. Say, I work out my advantage. I can't hear you. When the light of the world is in you, you are able to make the right decisions. There's some things that after you have prayed, some of us you pray for two hours, you're going to make decisions that will now reverse all you have prayed for. Because you're not seeing well. May God open your eyes today in the name of Jesus. Let's rest on our feet. Thank you, Jesus. I try not to pray sometimes, but this one I will pray. There's something that I think God has given me is to understanding of the systems of the world on various, at various levels. Politics, security, global systems. Even fashion. You will laugh at me, but even fashion. <laughs> Praise God, somebody. I can look at a woman and, and, and prescribe your size for you. Whether it's dress size or shoe size. <laughs> but we find it strange. 
God did that deliberately with all my extremism. Praise the Lord, somebody. Give me something that will bring me back to normal. Amen to Jesus. We're going to pray. When Christ was born, a star arose from the east. Please, let me say something very Go on. When Saul encountered Jesus, please watch this. His physical eyes became blind. How did Paul know? In Acts, I think Acts 9 verse 7, he now went fasting without food and water. Who taught him? His inner eyes opened when he met Christ. Then God stood on Ananias. Saul prayed. Oh my God. He prayed. Who taught him how to pray? That God had to move Ananias to go and meet him. Are you here, somebody? Who taught him how to pray? The eyes, his eyes were open. The issue is, let me tell you something. We will have problems and challenges. It's settled. But that's only the last result. Blind your eyes to them and open the eyes, your inner eyes, to see what God has given you already. I can't hear you. When Peter met Christ Jesus, Pastor Moses, I created this scripture for many years. How did you not recognize Christ Jesus? They ate together, they talked together, even saw that you are the Christ. Then after the resurrection, he couldn't recognize him. They talked together, and they walked together, that means he didn't even hear his voice. What happened to him? His inner eyes became blind. Because what appeared to him was not Jesus Christ, it was Christ Jesus. And it was when they broke bread, he knew him. Now listen very carefully. In verse 45 of Luke 24, he says he opened their understanding to understand the scriptures. If Jesus had to open Peter's understanding, who knew who Christ was by revelation? It shows you that we need to understand the Bible because it informs the way you see and the way you take decisions and the way you pray. Say, Heavenly Father, I can't hear you. I receive today the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. I can't hear you. Stop, 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 stop. You know, when I, when I used to be prayers, I still be prayers. And I want to get people to pray. Hmm? Get them emotional. I said, let us come against every witchcraft of your, witchcraft your bloodline. Hey! They start shouting. When you say, let's ask for the God, God's mercy. God, that's what I'm saying, Jesus. Name. There's something wrong. Because, because of your lack of knowledge, you think you have to fight to, against witches. Meanwhile, this prayer we are praying today, that the eyes of your understanding is that it is the most powerful preference you will pray. Are you here, somebody? You know, we've been taught many bad things. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask this day for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that the eyes of my understanding may be enlightened in the name of Jesus lift up your voice in the Holy Ghost like a master does in Jesus' name. When Christ was born, a star arose from the east. When Saul gave an account to King Agrippa in Acts 26 verse 13, he said, I saw at noonday where the sun shines in its brightness, a light shining above the brightness of the sun. That star is over you. For a star to arise from the east in the same way the sun rises from. Am I correct? I pray this morning. Say, I declare. I can't hear you. I command my star to arise and shine. Lift up your voice in prayer today. La paga stand amasa. Ala bara paga stone praka sita la masa namaha. Ada manzerete. Moshe ge bara 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 baka to na baka sata. Eme ja praga tana masonto oka. Manta na masiti rohusis. Mekere mana bara bara suta mana bara bara. Sing unto you no. Who shall tell you matana baza? Meke bara bara. In Jesus name. They had five loaves and two fish. 
And if you look at that text properly, he said, let them sit down in companies of 50. That means some of you are going to have 50 companies. Ah, you missed a good person. Say amen there. In companies of 50. That means for him to multiply, he needed them to do what? Order. He had to create order first of all. Because sometimes God cannot rest glory upon this, this orderliness. That's why when the world was that was with chaos, he said that they be light first of all. Are you following me, somebody? He now took it in his hands, my God. He blessed it. He took it in his hands, but he didn't look at it. The Bible says he looked towards heaven. So no matter what you're holding, don't look at the physical, look at the spiritual. Yes. Are you here, somebody? Yes. And he gave it, my God, to the disciples, the 12 of them. Are you watching this? That means he also multiplied in their hands. Yes. The place for marketing, where from you, it goes to 12, from 12, it multiplies. I declare the power to multiply Amen. comes upon your hands today in the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus broke the limits of the five loaves. I declare today, my Satan, my goes here. He didn't say, he didn't say I break limit. He, didn't say I break, he, just, he just blessed it. Just my God. Say, I bless the work of my hands in the name of Jesus. I can't say, I receive the blessings in the name of Jesus. Peter had toyed all night and caught nothing. Thank you for that scripture. He didn't say, I rebuke toiling. No. Jesus just sat on his boat. And I, this is my own interpretation of that text. As Jesus began to speak the word of God, the fish of the sea, where they were located, began to hear the voice that called him to existence. And they swam towards that voice. As you give voice to God's word in your life, uh, your blessings shall swim to you. Your breakthrough shall swim to you. In the name of Jesus, say, I declare, as I speak, your word daily, my fish will swim to me. In the name of Jesus. Oh, so the power to make wealth is released upon you today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. What the guy said, if you, don't, if you don't arise at a time as this, enlargement and deliverance will come from another place. As, let me show you something in Ephesians 4. He says, and I reach your hearing. Verse 28 says, let him that steals steal no more, but rather let him labor, walking with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needs. There's something called that thing which is good for you. Oh, you didn't get that. There's something called that thing which is good. When you find that thing, therein lies your blessings. Oh my God. I declare, I said, therein lies my blessings. Say, oh God, oh God, help me to locate that thing which is good that I may have to give. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. He can't tell about Sudha Bahasi at Hamalagasa in Jesus' name. My last two prayer points God allowed a decree to be released for Priscilla and Aquila to come to Corinth. They didn't know the only soul, but by divine orchestration, their paths were aligned. There's somebody that God needs to align your path with, that that alignment will cause your breakthrough. So what I pray is, God, align my time with the timing of that person. There's a prayer point I want to pray. God just reminded me. I'm a sogro Moses. I'll give you four prayer points to pray for yourself. Ephesians 1.1 says, Paul, an apostle by the will of God. 
Um, Ephesians 1 verse 5 says, um, having present us, <laughs> I'm a rush. But let me tell you what I want to pray today. He says that in the dispensation of the full, Ephesians 1.10, of the fullness of time, he may gather in one all things which are in heaven and which are on earth. He says, having, verse 9 says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, so for you to have dispensation of fullness of time, you must have time, fullness of time, and dispensation of time. Are you following me? Are you following me? That you may gather in one the things in heaven and the things on earth in one. There's some things I believe through our bad decision making we are bypassed in time. And it's behind us. But it is not past because you are in God. Are you here somebody? And God can recover that thing for you. The last problem is this. Say, Heavenly Father, everything I have lost, I take it back now because I am in Christ Jesus. I declare the good hand of God is upon me. Anywhere I lay request, it shall be answered in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your people today. I declare grand and wisdom that the world cannot understand. They speak mysteries that this earth cannot understand. Grant them direction. Grant them divine strategies. I command that time to align with the time of their destiny helpers. In the name of Jesus, let their timing be aligned with the timing of their partners that they may roll together. In the name of Jesus, let them find their way in the name of Jesus clap your hands all ye people and shout out to God with a voice of triumph